Hello, it's Vince Danzioni here with a financial market update and a little bit about the Making Money from Financial Spread Trading course. I'm recording this in the first few days of October 2015. Before we get started, the usual disclaimers, any stocks or markets that I mention in this update are for information purposes only. If you decide to follow in these trades, these are obviously at your own risk. What my main point is here is just to explain to you a little bit about what I see in the markets and uh, how my program and system works. All right, I was recently in the UK. Uh, this was, I think, when was it? it was at the end of August. And I saw lots of these uh, headlines in newspapers, which don't normally, you know, report financial news. All right, you know, I'm not talking about the Financial Times here. Um, and you may have seen these. The Times trillion is, trillion is wiped off the market. Share crisis hammer pensions. Um, the Daily Telegraph, Black Monday risks, and one which I actually liked, which is obviously a play on the Great Wall of China and the Daily Mail is the Great Fall of China. And whilst these headlines may be alarmist or even to a certain extent entertaining, what I've found, and I've been doing this now for 30 years, whenever you see the press with these sort of headlines, um, it's normally a contraindicator or it's too late, it's happened already. So by the time something hits a newspaper like this, uh, chances are we've already traded it and we've already made money from it. And in fact, it actually isn't as much to worry about. And in fact, from when these headlines were printed, most markets have actually, they're higher now than they were then. Now, there's an interesting saying, and uh, this was from the old pre US President Harry Truman. And it says, basically, a pessimist is one who makes difficulties out of his opportunities. And an optimist is somebody who can make opportunities out of his difficulties. Now, in my life and in my business, I've always been good at turning around negatives into positives. And for us as traders and investors, the nice thing about things like financial spread betting um, or options or CFDs, we make money from falling markets as well. So since sort of about May 2015, I'd say a lot of our profits have actually come from markets going down. So it's not a problem that markets go down. Now, of course, yeah, we also make market from markets going up and long term markets have done well and they have gone up. Um, but there's nothing to stop us from making money going down as well. So when we see headlines like these, we shouldn't be alarmed. Um, now, what's interesting as well, and you can do this yourself, um, obviously, Google is the answer to everything these days. And uh, obviously, Google collect a hell of a lot of information because every time we search something, they're collecting it. And something called Google Trends, uh, google.com slash trends. And if you put any term in there, you know, you put fast food or whatever you want to put in there, but if you put stock market crash, you can see how people have been searching that term stock market crash and where they've been searching it. And if you look at this chart here, you can see obviously there was a big spike in 2008, uh, which was the big financial crisis. And we actually had quite a big spike. This was about August, um, start of September. And again, it's come off a little bit now. But normally that's a good contraindicator when everyone's searching stock market crash. Um, it's either happened already or chances are there isn't too much to worry about. Now, my markets, I mainly trade US markets, although I'm based in Spain, Europe, some of you know, um, I actually pretend, uh, I prefer to trade the long term, um, the US markets. Um, I've just always done better out of US um, stocks. So if you're in the UK or in Europe, um, doesn't matter where you are, you know, you can still trade US markets. And if we look at the Dow, and although the S&P 500 is the better market to look at because it's broader, the Dow is obviously still the one that gets a lot of headlines. Um, it's done very, very well. And yes, we're off the all-time highs. We made the all-time high, which was May 2015. So we are down a little bit off the all-time highs. But if you were reading those headlines, you would think we were somewhere down here or something. The truth is, you know, we are basically just... Uh, probably about 10, 11% from an all time high, um, which isn't like, you know, the, the end of the world. And I think stocks have done a lot better than most people realize. The S&P 500, which is the broader market, again, not far off an all time high. And the NASDAQ 100, which is mainly tech stocks and some biotech stocks in there as well. Um, if you don't know, obviously Apple makes up 13% of that index. So Apple's quite an important stock and they're going to be reporting figures in uh, the 20th of October. So that will be quite important for obviously for Apple, but also for the whole tech sector and the NASDAQ because it has a big weighting. Now, 
Another thing to look at as well is oil prices. And some of you may know I actually came out in 2012 and said that oil prices were hit $50. Everybody laughed at me. If you put my name into Google and $50, uh, my name, you know, you'll see what comes up. And of course, now we're below $50 a barrel. So uh, that was another pretty good call. And again, I've traded oil probably for about 20, 25 years. Uh, both on the long side and the short side. So I've been around and seen, you know, my fair few booms and busts in the oil market. Uh, right now, I'm pretty neutral, actually, on oil. It's about where I said it would be, and it probably would drift up a little bit. Um, but overall, it's good news. Lower oil prices is good news. You know, okay, it's not great news for oil companies. It's not great news for Norway. Um, but for the US, it's good news for countries like in Europe, for instance, like Italy, um, a lower oil price is, is fairly good news because not just driving, of course, a lot of people use you know heating oil to uh, heat their homes. Also, oil is used as a byproduct. You know, you buy a book on Amazon, it gets delivered by a truck or whatever. Then there's an oil element to that. Um, airlines are uh, quite happy with the lower oil prices. You might have seen Ryanair and uh, EasyJet doing quite well, um, and also cruise ships. A lot of people forget um, that cruise ships are big, you know, fuel users, and uh, some of the cruise lines. Um, have done quite well as well recently. Um, but what I want to say is a lower oil price overall is, uh, is quite positive for markets. So uh, that's going to help out. And it'll take a while before those savings start to come in. But, you know, if, you're, if you've got an extra $1,000, $2,000 a year, yeah, you might save some of it. You might use it to pay off some debt, which isn't a terrible thing. Um, but also, I think some of that money is actually going to start coming back into the economy. And I think Christmas, you'll start to see that. So uh, that's good news for retailers. Overall, stocks have done, as I say, far better uh, than most people um, you know, realize. A lot of people say gold and property and what have you. But overall, the stock market um, has done very, very well. Even with you know the crashes, the 87 crash, the 29 crash, um, you know, stocks have made good returns. Now, so far this year, the S&P 500, as I'm doing this, is down 3.5% year to date. Okay, so if you bought the S&P at the start of the year, forget about dividends for now, you'd be down 3.5%. Um, not great, not shocking. However, we've done really well because we don't necessarily trade the index. We make money from individual shares. Now, if you look under the bonnet and you look at the actual S&P 500 shares in this heat map, these are all S&P 500 shares, uh, stocks like Amazon are up 70%. And yeah, I did say 70%. Now, chances are, you're probably going to have a look now and check and check it up. But if you hadn't already known that, you would have never probably realized that Amazon has moved 70% this year. Google's up 23%. Some of our tobacco shares have done really well. And I'll talk about tobacco in a minute. Apple's about flat so far this year. Um, and of course, there's also you know stocks, especially in the oil and gas uh, sector, and we're just talking about oil prices being lower, uh, that are down as well. So what you need to get out of your head is just thinking about the stock market. Think about actual individual stocks and how you can make money from them going up or down. As you see, there's, there's plenty of opportunities um, in there. Netflix is another stock which has done really, really well this year. This is one of mine. This is an S&P 500 stock. It's a smaller company, although it's a little bit bigger now. Uh, it's a company called Sketchers, which is trainers and footwear. I'm up about 800% since I first uh, bought that. And again, if you put my name and Sketchers into Google, you'll see. Um, and a £10 a point spread bet on that in January is worth about £80,000. Uh, and I still think that's got some uh, mileage. Imperial Tobacco. Now, I throw this one up into the mix a little bit. I know, you know, tobacco isn't for everybody, um, but I've done really, really well out tobacco shares over the years. In fact, since I first owned Imperial Tobacco, and Imperial is listed in the UK and also in the US. There's a US listing. It's up about 400%, and on top of that, you've had all the dividends. So far in 2015, whilst most markets are flat, it's up 16%, pays a dividend of 4%. They recently did a deal where uh, Reynolds and Lorillard merged and they had to sell off some of the brands to Imperial Tobacco. Now, if you're listening to this and maybe you've got an ISA or you've got an ISA allowance and you haven't used it up, this is the sort of stock you can put into your ISA um, because then any of the profits will be tax-free as well. And yes, tobacco is in decline in certain areas, but it's not the whole world and these companies are still throwing off cash. 
Now, Imperial also purchased Blue. That used to be part of Lorillard uh, Blue's electronic cigarettes. They own Rizzler. They own uh, t a cigar business. Um, and cigars is still a very, very good business. And obviously, rolling tobacco. And as I just said, whilst, yes, the UK, Australia um, is in decline. Look at these. You know, they've still got growth markets like Cambodia, uh, Russia, Vietnam, um, Sweden. And the US actually is still growing for them as well, which they're now the number three in the US, the valuation is relatively reasonable and the yield, as I say, is 4%. Compared, remember, what you're getting at the moment in cash is near zero, and I don't see interest rates going up uh, anytime soon. And if they do, they go up a quarter of a percent, maybe in the US or in the UK. Um, it's going to be a long time before you're going to be able to get 4% again on your savings in a bank or building society. So having stock, yes, you, have, you do take a bit more risk, uh, but you've also got a nice dividend there as well. Now, of course, I'm not a happy, clappy type of person. If you read back on me, I did very, very well out of the 2007, 2008 crash. So I'm more than happy to make money on shorts. A couple of ideas uh, that I've done well in, I'm actually out of these now. One was uh, GMCR, which is uh, Curric Green Mountain. It's like these coffee machines. Um, and I was short that stock. Win, which is a casino stock. Some of you might think of Win of Las Vegas, but Win's also very exposed to Macau, which is China. Obviously, China's been slowing down, um, and that's not been good news for Win. Um, so, you know, we can also make good money on uh, things going down as well as up. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of the short ideas as well. Now, small cap stocks, and I tend to stick to US. Um, rather than the UK and we've done very well with small cap stocks in 2014 2015 I think we'll do well next year as well and the easiest way to put it is the big dogs take over the little dogs and this happens especially in biotech and pharmaceuticals you get a small company it finds a half decent drug the big firm says well you know it's easier for us to buy them out than for us to wait five years get FDA approval and uh, do it ourselves so that's why takeovers, small companies get bought out by big companies. This is one stock, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to get bought out, but it's a stock that we've done quite well in this year. It's called Halozyme, H-A-L-O. Um, it's come off a little bit from the highs, but maybe one you want to have a, a look at and uh, do a little bit more research on. Now, these are some of the small caps, and I'm not saying that these are where you put your life savings. You know, many of these stocks, um, which are in the biotech sort of field or some of them just high tech, um, you know, they've moved like one of these you see has moved two and a half thousand percent, and that is year to date. Everything on here is up about 160 percent or more since uh, January this year. So these are you know pretty much boom, and of course, they can bust as well. The only thing, if you're buying a small stock like at two, three dollars, or four dollars, well, you know what your downside risk is, um, and that's been really uh, dominated by biotech. Now, let's have a little bit look on markets. And although this might seem like a bit of voodoo, it's quite interesting. Obviously, 2015 ends in a five. And uh, there's only been one losing um, two you know, years or decades that end in fives on the Dow going back to 1885. So if you look, everyone has made money, all right, that's sort of a break even, apart from 2005. However, the S&P actually still made money in 2005. So what's in will be interesting to see if we actually um, still end up positive for 2015. If we follow these uh, odds are fairly good. So the last few months of this year, we may actually see quite a bit of a catch up and strong gains. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do the average because I think that's a hell of a long way to go. Um, for the years ending in five, because the average year ending in five has done 28 percent. Um, but I think we, you know, we could still end up maybe in the seven, eight percents for this year, um, which from where we are now is actually would be a fairly decent return. But that's something to have a look at. As I say, it's it's it may be a bit quirky, um, but the fact that you know all these decades that have ended in fives have actually ended up uh, positive, it's uh, not not a bad omen for the rest of two thousand and fifteen. Now I also follow seasonality and. Uh, Basically, seasonality is the time of year. You might have heard of selling May and go away. Well, over the summer months, traditionally markets are a bit weaker or not much happens. And we're now starting to enter into the more positive time of the year, uh, the tail end of the year, and then the start of next year are the more favorable six months. And I talk more about that in the course um, and explain a little bit more. 
Now, one thing, and I don't know, obviously, know who's listening to this, the different age groups, I tend to attract a lot of people in their 40s and 50s, um, is that we are all going to live longer, which is great news. Um, but the bad news is many people are going to be broke because when they started saving or uh, if they have started saving, they thought, well, OK, my life expectancy might be 65, 66 um, you know, when I first started out in uh, in this business in 1985, the average, you know, pension or whatever, they thought, well, the guy retires at 65, goes and plays golf for a couple of years, he'll drop dead, we won't have to pay out too much. Of course, now people are living to 70, 80, 90, um, you know, especially including men, you know, whereas traditionally men would die younger um, because men don't go down the pits anymore. Um, the life expectancy is a lot better. So that's great news. The life expectancy is higher. But what is bad news is I think a lot of people haven't adjusted for that. So you're going to have to be working longer and being smarter with your money. Just putting your cash and saving it and earning 1% or less than 1%, that's not really going to work for you. So it's very important that you learn how to manage your money and realize you're going to have to make that money last longer if you want any sort of decent retirement. Um, than you may have had, you've thought of in the past. Now, if you want to go further and say, I've got a package uh, making money from financial spread trading, you can actually use this system, although many people think, oh, it's all about spread betting, uh, spread trading. You can actually use the system just for generally share dealing. So if you just want to buy shares through an IC, you can still use this system. You can use it for FX trading and not necessarily just short term. A lot of people think, oh, currencies, it's all about short term. We have a lot of people that make money by trading currencies over weeks and months, um, which isn't quite what you know some of the brokers will tell you or what they want you to do, but it can be very actually profitable over longer term. CFDs and spread betting, as I say, it's easy to follow. It's a workbook. You've got DVDs. You've got the members site. You've got full support from me personally. So if you're stuck, I'm here. It's a clear buy and sell system. I'm not into day trading. Now, some people do do shorter term trades, but the system was designed for people that had jobs, other businesses that could just do it at the end of the day. So it's really been set up to be done in 10 to 20 minutes maximum a day, in many cases actually less. Now, if you want to find out more, you just go to www.winonmarkets.net. You can read through it all again. You've got my press cuttings on there. You'll see what other customers have to say. And you've also got a little... Um, tab there onto my blog where I do some free updates as well. So if you're not interested in buying right now, but you still want to follow me, um, by all means do that. Now, I think it'll make a massive difference having me on your side. And a lot of people claim they've got winning systems and they can maybe make money when markets are easy. But when markets are a bit more volatile, it's a case of then you see really who knows their stuff. And as I say, I've just done 30 years now from when I first started. And Warren Buffett came out with a great you know, saying some years ago, which is only when the tide goes out that you discover who's been swimming naked. And I think a lot of people in this industry are naked in that they've been, you know, they've been all right the last few years where markets have been fairly easily trending up. But I think if we're going to get choppier markets, it's going to be those with the skills, those with the discipline, those with systems that are going to be able to survive. And by following me and getting my course, you know, you're going to be in a great position. All right, that's basically it. If you've got any questions, as I say, feel free to email me, vince at finbets.com. I pride myself on my, my support. So, uh, you know, I do come back to you. I don't ignore you like many people do. Um, if you want to find out more, just go to www.winonmarkets.net. Thanks very much for listening.